from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this good Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. You can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. Maybe you won't even get on the air. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Joe is listening to our show online from Phoenix, Arizona on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, my stepfather. Yes, sir. Uh, the reason why I'm calling is I, I do believe in a lot of things you say. But the problem is you repeat yourself over and over and over again. Well, that's because you don't know how radio works. And uh, if you knew anything about my business, which you don't, uh, what you would know is that uh, the average listener listens for about 50 minutes a day. And that's it. And many of the things you say uh, at one particular time will not be heard by the majority of listeners if you don't say it again. All right, but how about your buddy, Russ Martin? What do you know about Russ Martin? You're in Phoenix. Oh, you know what? And you're not in Phoenix anymore. You're, you're take, taking off the stations out here. Uh, we had the number one show in Phoenix, and the radio station you changed format. Yes, we did. You did. You know nothing about Yeah, we had the number one show. That's correct. It, it, by the way, happen. by the way, you are, do you work for a competing company or something? Is that your deal? Just no. tell us. Tell us who you are. My name is Joe. I used to live in DFW area. Uh-huh. And that's why I know Russ Martin. I know you. Mm-hmm. You used to be out here in Phoenix. Why are you so angry? And, I, why are you so line. angry? Why are you so angry and bitter? Well, what... what you know, are you angry you because you angry because I can buy and sell you? Are you angry because of your small salary? Are you angry because you haven't accomplished anything near what I have accomplished in life? Is that what your problem is? Are you jealous because you wish you had the things I have? A house, a four-story home in the Hollywood Hills, a 20-acre ranch in Santa Barbara County. You wish you had those things, and so you're angry, and so you call in and bitterly call up here and try to give me a hard time? I buy and sell land. You buy it? Oh, please. Thing. You buy it. What, what do you buy and sell? Rio Rancho? Give me a break. Glen Gary, Glen Ross, you're full of crap. Uh, uh, it, it, you are full of crap. You, you, know, you don't want to talk about the You point. know why? Because You want to know why? Because people who, bet, people who are big spenders, people who are big players, they don't have 17 minutes and 49 seconds to hang on the phone to talk to some stupid radio show. They're busy doing deals. You are, you are no more a player than anyone else who calls this program. Yeah, you know why? Because I'm stuck on stupid. Because yeah, stupid Joe, why don't you send us a copy of your tax <laughs> return so we can see uh, just how much you make? Let's see. Why don't you send that in? Are you going to send that in, pal? I'll I tell you what. I would like to see how much money you make. So why don't you tell us? Uh, uh, what do I make? Yeah. Uh, I, I make about, about, about 250000 a year right now. Ooh-wee. 250000 a year. Are you? I blew by that this year a long time ago, son. Yeah, but... but, but but this is not the story right now. I don't care what the story is. Do you realize? Do you realize? Uh, well, again, and and you continue to listen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, because I listen to your buddy Russ Martin. 
Uh, well, again, I'm glad to know that you, uh, you uh, here you are, Mr. Big Real Estate Wheeler and Dealer. You've got nothing better to do than sit by the computer hunched over listening to radio shows from other cities and then calling in and hanging on forever. Nobody listening believes you even make 200000 or or $100,000 a year. You're not even close. Well, your buddy Russ Martin doesn't even listen to you because apparently he's told me to get married, even though you kept saying... Again, you know, you uh, but, but amazing how a big player like you has time to hear all about Russ Martin's personal life and has time to listen to this show and has time to call radio programs and hang on for 17 minutes and 49 seconds. It's amazing how somebody like you, who should be out there doing business deals, has nothing better to do with this. You're just another loser who lost his job in DFW and had to move to Phoenix for another job at a telephone boiler room or something like that. I know exactly who you are and what you are. Yeah, you was because the thing is, I, I got land sitting out there. Sure you do. Yes. Out, I don't need to be talking to Sure you now. do. That's right. You've got land sitting. I'll bet you do. Uh, you and the mortgage companies and the foreclosures. Yeah, I'm sure you've got plenty of it. Foreclosures? We're talking Joe Max. We've got wide open Sure land you have. All right, fine. I'll tell you what. You send me proof of that and I'll look at it. Yeah, but, but send that right in, you would you? Talk about the real will you send here. that? I want you to send that in. Are you are you are you man or a mouse? Are you going to send that to me? Yes, I will. I'll I want to see it. Real issue. I want to see the proof. All right, you're I want about to the see it. Here. No, I'll tell you what. After you send it in, include your home phone number, and after I see evidence of how much money you make <laughs> and how much land you own, I'll talk about anything you want. But you've got until seven p.m. to fax that to me. Oh, yeah, you, you know. You've got until 7 p.m. to fax me the front page of last year's tax return and to fax me evidence that you own any real estate at all. And, and these all these people you turn over. If you, if you, you just send that right in and I will be happy to discuss anything you want. But yeah, you know what? You know what, Mr. Small Timer? You know what, Mr. Small Timer? You can't do it. Yeah, I, I thought you walk out this way. You don't want to talk to the real subject. Again, I have nothing. I, I you just uh, you just made this point here that you're you're a big wheeler and dealer. So you just send the proof in, no, and no, once but, but, once I see it, I will let you talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, but but not until then. Not, not until now. then. You you're going to send you that in, right? You. Are you ready to send that in? I've got, I've, I've got uh, Dean J. Dominio out there ready to receive your facts. Are you ready to send that information in? Are you, are you, re are you ready to send it in? Yes or no? This is your last chance, son. Uh, me and Dean. Bye. Idiot. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Moron. <laughs> I'm a big wheeler and dealer. That's why I know about Russ Martin getting married and you and your show and how much you repeat yourself. and uh, Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm calling in and hanging on for 17 minutes because I got all these big business deals I got to get done. So I call radio shows and I sit on hold. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of land out here, son. Plenty of land. Yeah. Good luck. Oh my goodness, Jennifer on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Great. I just want you to know I like your show, and uh, so does someone else that's listening. That would be my boyfriend, so you might want to say hi to him. Well, I might want to, but uh, it's a little too soon yet. <laughs> okay, I have a question. I want breast implants, and he doesn't want me to have them. Why do you think that a man would not want his girlfriend or significant other to have a breast implant? Well, I wouldn't either. Why? I don't like fake boobs. Okay, but it's not about getting them bigger. It's just about I've had children, and I want them to... He likes you the way them. you are. Well, but I don't. Well, then, then okay. again, uh, you know, if uh, by the way, is he married to you? No, we're not married. What are you doing having kids with a guy you're not married to? Uh, he, these are not his children. These are children from a previous marriage. Ah, I see. So why didn't you get a boob job before you met him? Before I met him? Yeah, because you want him to pay for it, right? No, no, I don't want him to pay for it. Not then, at all. Then why? Because I want one. I, I want to, <laughs> okay, you want me to tell you why I want I want to be able to walk around in my pajamas without a bra on. You can do and, that. And still, <laughs> you say this, but. You He's perfectly that. happy. Is he not getting the job done in the sack? Is he not attracted <laughs> to you? Is he not crazy about you? 
Yes, I'm sure he is. He'd probably say the same thing if he was on the phone. Then that's, why should anything else be important? Basically, you're saying don't fix something if it's not broke. Correct. Well, I mean, I know what you're saying, but, you know, women, I don't know, maybe we hit this time in our life where you want to... So no, you had time in your life when you want to get attention from other men, and then you'll never admit no, it to me no, or him. No, 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 no. Yes, I yes, yes, not. yes. That's what it's all about. And Donnie, I mean, the fact is, you, if you, for example, I go through this argument all the time with women about keeping their hair long or cutting it short. My boyfriend wants me to keep it long, and I want to cut it short. It's, too much. it's like, don't you want to please the guy you're with? Yes. Then, then, then do what he asks. Hmm, okay, I see what you're saying. You, you know, he's got a big smile on his face right now saying he won this little war. <laughs> I'm out of a war. I mean, well, you know, war, I, I, this is this is one reason where like, I, I have such a hard time with American women because th th women are not like this from other cultures. They're just not. They're just satisfied. And they want to satisfy their men. I do want to satisfy my men. The, your I, man I wants feel. you not to have a boob job. End of story. Okay. He knows what he wants, and he told you. Right. But you want to argue with him and tell him why he's wrong. Well, it's not that I'm going to argue. Yes, just... you do. You told me it's a war. Okay, so never mind. Is it really <laughs> worth not... having a war over it? I'm not. No, it's not a war. I mean, we we never. Why should argue you be to the point that we're yelling at each other? I, you like shouldn't that. have this disagreement. He told you he likes you the way you are. Okay. Case closed. I guess it's just that I remember how things used to look before children, and he likes the way you look today. <laughs> okay. By the way, he met you after the children, and you yes. were that way when he met you, and yes. he liked it, and he got with you. Right. If yeah, the relationship doesn't work out, when he leaves you, get a boob job at that time. <laughs> that way you won't have to debate it with the next guy. Yeah, and you know your whole uh, why buy when you can leave? Right. Yeah. We're going to talk about that one. I'm right here. Um, no, I, I mean, I agree with you, but then I also believe that sometimes in life, you know, it's kind of like you say, a piece of paper and why mess up something when it's going good? But I also believe that it's a lifelong commitment. But it's, but that's the biggest joke in the world. Of fifty percent of the people who make this lifetime commitment to violate it. But in fact, it's more than fifty percent. That's, that's right. the that's the people who get right. the divorces. That doesn't count the people who have affairs and stay in marriages, like Elliot Spitzer and his wife. That doesn't uh, count uh, uh, people who have affairs uh, and uh, and they each know that the other had affairs, like the new governor of New York and his wife. That right. doesn't count the people who are miserable and they stay for the sake of the kids or they stay because of the cost of a divorce. Oh, no, the no, vast majority of people who are married are miserable. Well, I don't believe in being in a marriage if you're miserable either. But there are, they, this is not a lifetime commitment for most people. Right. And, and, but now, if you're not most people, and I am Nobody, not everybody people. thinks they're not most people. Who, who did you have those kids with? Um, my ex-husband. Where did that lifetime commitment go? Mm, nowhere. <laughs> we won't discuss where that went. Uh, well, it went that. away, didn't it? You, yeah. You're a different kind of person who believes in lifetime commitment. Where's your husband? Oh, he's my ex-husband. Yeah, well, uh, guess what? You're just like the rest of us. Well, I mean, I Get with the you're program. Saying. You're no different okay. from the rest of us. If, if you, because, um, of course, I know your views are very jaded on marriage, and I can understand why because of where... Why wouldn't yeah. yours be jaded? Your, your ex-husband is your no. ex-husband. Well, Where okay, is the lifetime also, commitment you're telling me about? I also believe that the man I am with now, my boyfriend, that he is different from the men I've been with in my past. Well, but you believe that about your ex-husband when you first met him. Mm, and well, you married no. him, and you believed you were going to be with him forever. And you stood in front of a, probably a minister, and you took vows to make a lifetime commitment to him, didn't you? Till death do us part. You ever say that phrase to somebody? Okay, yeah, I did. But you I said it. He didn't. Yeah, but, 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 why did you pick somebody like that and have three oh, children with him? I guess, I guess because I didn't get to know him well enough, I guess. But you had three children with him. How much time does it take to get to know somebody? <laughs> Okay, Tom. You are no different from the rest of us. 
now say that you're wrong there because no, I I'm not. From a lot no, yet, you're not. Am, no, you're I not. No, so you're not. Here, you're Stop telling here. us that you're you're the good one in favor of lifetime commitment. You got no, a divorce. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. What I'm asking you is, you're sitting here trying to put me in the boat with the rest of the women in the world. How is that? You fair? are in the boat with the rest of the women in the world who've gotten divorces, which is the majority of them. Okay, but have you ever got a divorce because someone had an affair on you? Yes. Okay, so you've done it. Why was it wrong for me to divorce this man that had I didn't, an affair on I, me? Because I don't go around talking about lifetime commitment. I know better. Okay, let's get back to the boobs and, you know. By the way, the <laughs> guy you're with today, you think yes. of him the same way you thought of the ex-husband, and you have no idea what he's going to do later on after he gets bored with you, after your 40th birthday, when the turkey neck starts hold kicking on, in. Hold on, hold on, When the menopausal Bored. mustache starts coming in, you have no idea <laughs> what he's going to do in the future. You have no idea when he's going to Elliot Spitzer you. You have no um, idea when you, no, you're going to find I, out I you're married I, to client number nine. You have no idea. You're you have, right. Nobody knows what tomorrow holds. I will I'll give you that. But I You know no believe, more about the guy you're dating now than you knew about your ex-husband. You probably know see, less. See, I disagree with you because I, I do know a lot more about this person than I did about the ex-husband. Really? So um, yeah, um, you, how many kids did you have with the ex-husband before you got to know him? Um, well, actually, that was a fault of mine. I was very young and thought that I knew what I was doing and went right. into the whole, you know, right. being pregnant and having babies and saying Right. Things. Um, is that what I tell my daughter to do now? Hell no. And she's going to do um, exactly what you did. At no, 18, she, she'll get married and she'll start pumping not. them out just like not. you did. Yes, she will. How old is she? Not, six, not, okay, let me my, guess. She's like 16, right? No, she's 12. 12. Okay. My my parents did not instill the values that I feel I am in. You'll be a forty year old grandmother. Write it down. I will not be a for I'm gonna write it down because I'm gonna call you and I'm gonna go, you know what? You were wrong, Tom. I go am ahead. a forty year old grandmother. I'm telling you. Well, you you don't know my child either. I know you. Okay, and so what is me isn't don't you believe okay, for instance, what about the first kid that went to college out of his family? There's always a first for everything, right? What does that prove? You're not that the first. Proves. You're not the first anything. No, I'll go ahead and tell you I followed in my mother's footsteps, and am I proud of it? So why wouldn't your daughter footsteps. follow in your footsteps? Because she's because I talk to her every day. Oh, about, your mother didn't talk to you. No, no, she did not. So your mother said, "Go ahead and do the same stupid things I did." I wouldn't say she said that, but she never talked to me about it either. Mm. She never said how important college was, or she never talked about. Um, credit or, I mean, I talk to my children that are only 10 and 12 about credit in college on a daily basis, mm -hmm. about how important it is that you graduate from high school, that you go to college. And of course, my son has different, you know, he said, well, I'm going to be, you know, in a rock band, mom. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you can take, you can take the girl out of the trailer park, darling, but you can't take the trailer park <laughs> out of the girl. Like it, like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. What's that thing? By dictionary. Stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likes Show. Oh, yeah. Wide open telephones. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? Hello. Hello. Tom, I just wanted your opinion on gambling. Yes. What do you want to know? Do you gamble? Um, most of my gambling is done um, on things that I can research and have a certain amount of control over, like the stock market. How about, like, you know, playing uh, the casino, playing poker, playing blackjack? I do play blackjack occasionally for fun, but not for money. And um, I do a little sports betting. But uh, okay. that's it. That's it. Okay. I I, uh, I I don't play roulette. I uh, don't play the slots. Got it. All right, Tom. 
Why do you ask? Because I gamble a lot. How much do you gamble? Almost everything that I got in my pocket. Why do you do that? Why? Because it's a rush. <laughs> yeah. How good does it feel to lose as much as you lose? Well, I'm not a sore loser, so I don't, you know, I just take... So you, it's a rush being broke. When you well, can't pay the rent, ooh, I get a rush from that, ooh. No, 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 I mean, I can pay the rent. I don't spend anything that I, you know, I take care of the bills, I take care of the gas, I take care of what I need to do, and anything that's left over goes straight to gambling. No. I Personally, I get much more excitement... Uh, placing a uh, an educated bet on a stock or mutual fund or uh, something having to do with the stock market. Well, I haven't gotten into that, too, but I'm thinking about that, too. Yeah, but it's not like uh, going to the casino because you have to do a little reading, a little research. Here's what I, here's what I feel. I mean, every, just the way I look at it, you know, who, everybody that makes their money, they should, you know, spend it on whatever... You know. Well, you have the right to do that. Who said you don't have the right to do that? All right. Do you have a wife or anything? Oh, hell no. Good. You have the right to do whatever you like. Who told you you can't do it? Right. Now, I just wanted to know. You asked me what I thought. I didn't tell you you can't do it or I don't think you should be able to do it. You, you, as far as I'm concerned, you can jump off a building, kill yourself. It's fine with me. All right. What, what do I care? You feel like people are trying to stop you from doing what you want? Oh, people try to stop me, but they can. I still do what I want. Who's trying to stop you? Oh, just, you know, friends and family. They know I'm gambling. Oh, you're stupid. Don't spend your money on gambling. I got, I go, I got nothing better to spend it on. I'm not going to spend it on girls. That's for sure. Well, it depends on what you think uh, it's worth spending money on. Um... You know, for me, I like buying real estate and having a fantastic place to go on the weekend. Right. You okay. you like staying in a smoky casino. Okay, fine. <laughs> I, would, I would do that, but I messed up my credit at an early age, so. Well, that's not smart, and you could fix it, but uh, apparently you don't want to. I do want to, but uh, if I do fix it, I'm just going to, you know, take out the money and go gamble some more. No? So you're never going to own any real estate? Probably not. Never going to have a vacation home? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably won't have any savings for retirement? Probably not. You'll be uh, eating dog food and living on your Social Security check? No, no, no. I won't be eating dog food. That's really? How much, is in, your, how much is in your 401k? I don't have a 401k. I'm sure you don't. How about your IRA? How much is in there? You got a Roth IRA? I don't have that either. Of course you don't. So how are you going to have money when you retire? Where's that coming from? I don't think I'm going to be old enough to reach that age. So you're going to die, what, uh, on the way to the casino? Or where, where are you going <laughs> to? Where, where yeah, are you going to? I'm on the 5 South. That's just fantastic. On the transition to the 710. Yeah, that 710 can be kind of a harrowing experience. Yeah, tell me about it. Right. So uh, what do you do for a living, Jack? I own cell phone shops. You own cell phone shops? I own two cell phone shops. All right. And what are you going to do when, uh, just like the people who own the beeper stores and all the other prior technology, when that, when that changes somehow or when there's other ways uh, to get a telephone or whatever or other ways to, what are you going to do then? I haven't thought about it that long. Sure you haven't. Sure you haven't. Well, hopefully, I can marry somebody rich that has more money than I do. All right. Well, hopefully. Yes, hopefully you can win the lottery. Hopefully, a beautiful girl will stop by your front door, knock on the door, and say, I want to have sex with you immediately. Hopefully, the Easter Bunny's coming Sunday with some nice, colorful eggs in a basket for you. Well, yeah, my neighbors stop on the door and say, I want to have sex with you, so I'm good there. There you go. Well, Jack, that just sounds like a fantastic life you've got ahead of you. No retirement. It's, it's a thrill. No retirement money. Uh, think you're going to be dead before retirement age. Fantastic. Of course, man. I drink. I smoke. I don't think I'm going to. You got that. bad credit. Fan that's just great. I mean, you're not only a loser. You're proud of being a loser, which I I really admire. 
No, I'm not, I mean, I'm not a loser. I just feel like when God was passing luck, I was... It has nothing to do with luck. You see, that's the whole thing. People like you who don't do anything or don't work on anything, don't plan anything, you blame it on having bad luck. The reason I've had good luck is because I work harder than you do. I plan more than you do. I don't waste my time in casinos like you do. I go out there, I work, I save, I invest, I plan, I get what I deserve. No luck involved. Well, maybe you work way too much. Have you ever thought about that? Well, put it this way. If, 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 if the alternative is being like you, I'm happy to work. I enjoy what I do for a living. And I enjoy the benefits of what I get, uh, travel to other countries, uh, real estate, places to go on vacation. Fantastic. But uh, you just keep going to casinos and uh, gambling all your money and not planning for the future. You just keep doing that. And uh, I think it's great that you're so proud of it. Of course I'm proud of it. Mm. Bad credit and everything. Fantastic. How low is your FICO score? Have you checked it? Like 300 something. <laughs> <laughs> like 300 so that's great so you how many uh creditors have you stiffed you're 26 how many have you stiffed about 12 and you're proud of that too oh of course i am total loser and proud of it why am i a loser if i'm stiffing big companies uh because jack you could be a big company you could own a company you could be a success but you're not you're a loser i do i do own companies Oh, stop it! Company, so no, no, no! You own you, you 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 rent a couple of storefronts. Stop it! You rent a couple of storefronts that could be taken away from you at any moment. Well, the radio show can be taken away from you. Anyway. No, it can't. I've got a five-year contract. They have to pay me even if I don't work. Well, you think you're going to take all that money back? You know, to hell or heaven with you. Well, again, Jack, uh, I have a long life to live, and I'm enjoying it while I'm here. Exactly, and that's exactly what I do. And I can buy and sell you. You can't buy me. You can't sell me. Oh, of course I could. Of course you can't. Could? I could. You know what? I could get in touch with the landlord who rents you those two stores. I could <laughs> buy that property, and I could evict you. I could do it. I oh, have yeah, the money to do it. My, my, I'm, I'm realistic here. My contract ends up, of course you can do it. <laughs> I don't even have to wait for that. There's probably some early termination clause or some way I could uh, get you aced out. If I wanted to do it, I could do it. Yeah, uh, Any person that puts their mind to anything, they can do it. Put if it I, this way. I, I got better mind. things to do I, than that. But believe me, I, I could buy and sell you. Too. I could buy and sell you before lunch tomorrow. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been gone from it for about two years now, and it is just clear thing. It is worth it. Now I go out all the time with different girls. It's a blast. Now, I don't know what I was thinking imprisoning myself. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likish Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Paul on the Tom Likish Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I wanted to ask you about uh, your three-year-old uh, thoroughbred there. Yes, sir. That's TBD, right? <laughs> of course it's not. It's DTB. DTB. Sorry about that. I heard you talking about it, and uh, but I couldn't call in that day. But anyway, the T stands for Tom, right? Uh, oh, DTB stands for Dump That Bitch. <laughs> well, that was a good race. Hey, congratulations. That, that was the maiden, right? You broke your maiden on that well, one. Well, I don't, I don't own the horse. Uh, we had the trainer on last week, as a matter of fact. And uh, this was the uh, second race at Santa Anita a week ago yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, you replayed the race. That was great. I love the place horse, uh, too. Wink at the girl. Yes, that was, exactly. That was great. That was definitely a Tom Likas race. No doubt about that. Okay, oh, yeah. goes in. And oh, where they go. DTV broke well from the outside gate along the inside Harlem. Now they're all lining up on the lead, though. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Now there goes Purr for me to kick on. They weren't too keen to get an early leader, but Purr for me now going on to do that. And Hus the King is at the back. Four lengths would cover the lot. 
They run to the 5 eighths pole and it's Purr for me down at the rail and DTB. The two favourites stride for stride as they move down the back stretch just behind that. Wink at the girls racing in behind them comes Harlem who's now six off those leaders and Huss the King the early trailer. Past the half mile they go and purr for me, comfortably in front by a length, DTV, quite content to just sit there in the second spot. Then it's two lengths back to wink at the girls, now coming after them from third. Harlem is still giving them seven length start and three more to Huss the King. They come past the 5.16s and Purr for Me continues to lead them. DTB though being confidently ridden and DTB now cutting into that lead. A wink at the girls in the pink colours. Also Harlem running on in the black and even Huss the King running on. Suddenly it's wide open. Homeward bound now and it's DTB who goes on to get the lead. Wink at the girls tackles immediately. Hunk the King coming home gamely down the inside and Harlem at the rail. Coming for home now and it's DTB up alongside. Wink at the girls. DTB in front as they run to the wire. DTB's one of the neck. Wink at the girls second. Harlem a close third. Here's Bernie on the top like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, I've been listening to your shows for a couple weeks. Um, at first, I thought it was just kind of disgusting. Then I thought it was kind of disgusting how you got callers that actually agree with you. Maybe you're in the minority. Oh. Well, let me just ask you, uh, I have two things I wanted to bring up, two questions. One is, I mean, I think your, your opinions on sex and marriage are really kind of disgusting. Um, so with your attitude about sex, um, I would imagine you're probably riddled with BD, aren't you? Why, I'm not, Bernie, because I know how to use a condom, and I don't know which conservative church you attend. Uh, but trust me, uh, condoms are better than ever and uh, very, very effective. Okay, well, I, I don't know. I have a hard time believing you on that. No, again, experience tells, Bernie, and you don't have any. Well, number two, um, I would say that you're never going to, you probably don't know what it's like to have a kid say, I love you. Do you? You probably never Actually, know. I do. My nephew says it to me all the time, and I think it's wonderful. You're not going to have your own child that says, I love you. I don't need to. I don't have that kind of ego, Bernie. I know you've got a big one. Uh, but me uh, having my nephew, who is the son of my brother, and my nephew, who reminds me of me when I was seven years old, uh, that is quite adequate and uh, quite enjoyable. No, I'm just saying because your attitude about relationships, you're going to probably die a pathetic old man. Cause you don't uh, well, not anything. not in the least, because I've got many, many friends, friends who I've known for over 20 years. Uh, I've got a bullpen of women, uh, women who I know a little bit, women who I know a lot. Uh, I've got plenty of people around me, Bernie. Uh, I, I, I understand you may find it impossible to believe that unless you're in some miserable marriage with some ball-busting bitch who's gained uh, 50, 60 pounds since you married her, that you couldn't possibly be happy uh, unless we do it your way. But believe me, there's other ways to do it. I don't think your women are going to be there when you need them. Again, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not planning on using my friends as the visiting nurse association, uh, or as caretakers. Uh, I've got the money because I haven't wasted it on women or, uh, on, uh, children's clothes or any of that stuff. I've got the money to have the best care available. And I will have the best care available. Yeah, you're missing. You got the money, but you got no love. That's the problem. I've got plenty of love. I, I, there are so many people who love me. There are so many people around me. And, uh, Bernie, it's impossible for you to understand since you have a monopoly on love. and There's only three or four people who are allowed to love you that way. I, I've got dozens of people who love me. Believe me. No, you got mostly sex. I mean, you're you don't know what I have, Bernie. You've never been to my home. You don't yeah. know me from Adam. Uh, you're a complete stranger who's calling in trying to agitate. But the bottom line here, Bernie, is that I'm about as happy as I could possibly be if I wanted to be married, if I wanted to create another generation. I'm certainly capable of doing those things. I don't choose to do them. And you are so narrow-minded as to believe that you have the one and only way to be happy in life. And how sad that is. I'm saying you're clueless about intimate relationships. I am not the le I am not clueless at all because I've got friends and friendships that go back decades. You don't know what it's like to have a, re a relationship with somebody. Friends, you come and go, you talk. You can, you're no, they don't come and go. Now, friends of 25 and 30 years don't come and go. They're there uh, for the good times and the bad. What I mean is if you're upset with them, you cannot talk to them for a week or a month. So you don't know how to maintain a relationship, how to work. You don't know what I know how to maintain. You don't know anything about me. And you've got some gall calling up here and pretending to know about me. You know nothing about me.
You don't have a significant other because... I don't need to have a significant other, and if I chose to have one, believe me, there are plenty of women who would like to be that person. You're clueless on how to maintain a relationship like that. I don't need to maintain a relationship like that. I'm much happier living alone. Of course, there's people who are happy being alone. I I enjoy it. And uh, by the way, if I enjoy it, then uh, what is the problem? I have people in my home when I choose to have them visit. That's when they are there. And when I choose to spend time alone, that's what I do. I'm not agoraphobic. I'm not antisocial. I do have friends. I have parties. I have neighbors I talk to. Uh, Believe me, I've got plenty of people in my life. And then when I need time alone, I have that time. And I don't have somebody who's there pressing me 24-7 for a response or making demands. I just don't. Like you do, Bernie, because we all know, Bernie, that what you are is pussy whipped. And your 180-pound ball-busting wife is out there probably with a gun to your head telling you what to say and to call in. You just said I don't know you. I'm making all these judgments about you. You haven't denied that your wife is a 185-pound ball buster, Bernie, and, and we all know what you got. How stupid is that to say I can't judge you and then you just judge me? Well, because, Bernie, you set, the st- you set the bar here. You set the standard. So let's all talk about what you've got, Bernie. Let me ask you a question. Is your wife a bathing beauty there, Bernie? Is she what? Is she a bathing beauty? She's all right. She's not, <laughs> yeah. She's how much How much does she weigh, Bernie? She's a piggy piggy. Yeah. How much? Why? Why do you, why do you want Tell to... Tell us. Our... Well, because oh. I, know you, I know you're calling from Beaverton, Oregon, where the women come pretty large, so I want to find out how large your wife is. Tell us. Look where your mind is. You're just Go about- ahead. Okay, why are you afraid to tell us how much your wife weighs? This shows how clueless you are. Why are you afraid to tell us how much your wife weighs? You're going down the wrong road. Why are you? I'll decide what road I want to go down. You go down whatever road you want. The point is, why are you afraid to tell us how much your wife weighs? Look, and um, the answer is because she weighs at least 180 pounds and, and, and probably more because you don't want to tell me. Look, I have to go now because I was... Oh, yeah, you have to go now because, because yes, because Mrs. Bernie from Beaverton uh, needs to uh, tell you now what to do next, what show to call next, right, Bernie? No, because I was on hold for a long time. Because that ball-busting bitch you're married to, Bernie, she uh, runs the house over there. She wears the pants of the family, and they're in 48, uh, 48 short, by the way, and uh, she's uh, calling you for dinner now, right, Bernie? Why do you cut me off? Are you afraid of what uh, I Bernie, I'm not afraid. Bernie, I'm not afraid of Believe me, nobody's more afraid than you are of your ball-busting wife. Then why are you cutting me off so I can't... I haven't cut head. you off. There's nothing left to say, Bernie. All you're doing is repeating the same material over and over. Can I say a sentence without cutting me off? No. I, I'll tell you what. I don't need your advice on how to do a radio program. Because you're afraid of what I'm I'm not say. afraid of anything. Yes, I'm not afraid of you, you and your big fat wife. I'm not afraid. I'll tell you what, I'm not even afraid of your big fat wife. You're not afraid, but cut me off. Because... I'm not afraid of anything. Trust me when oh. I tell you. Oh, that's why. Like, yeah. So why do you cut me off? I don't, again, because you've got nothing to say that you haven't already said. Oh, We've heard it over know. and over and over. I know I'm going to be miserable, old man. Oh. I'm miserably alone. I'm sad. I can't maintain an intimate relationship. I've heard it over and over and over, Bernie. And I know that your ball-busting bitch of a wife has probably written your script for you and uh, told you to call in. And she's probably standing over you right now with a rolling pin waiting for you to finish. Okay, since you don't want to listen to me, I guess there's nothing more. No, there really isn't. Idiot. That's Bernie from Beaverton with the ball busting bitch. <laughs> Who's a big blimp? <laughs> Betcha. <laughs> oh boy, let's see. I've got a minute. Uh, let me uh, try Andrew here. Uh, Andrew, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Doing okay. All right. Um, I just had a question. I think you talked about this earlier in the week, but I missed the show. Um, I put away ten thousand or put aside ten thousand dollars last week to invest in Visa's IPO this week. But uh, the whole Bear Stearns thing happened, and on Monday morning, I woke up bright and early and bought it at three seventy three, and now it's around six dollars, and I still have it in there. You know, you know, came up like sixty something percent. But I'm not sure. You know, I've never been in a situation with a company like this. If I were you, I'd take what you made and run with it and don't look back. The Tom Likas Show.